So this is the fifth video on my multivariable calculus course. So this uh, lecture is about planes in space. Usually when we think about planes in three-dimensional space, we think about three points that are not collinear. This is one way of thinking about it. So if you have a plane, it goes through three points. However, a better way would be to think about a plane as an object that contains one point and it is also perpendicular to one vector. So this is the vector n and this is the point p0. Let's assume the point p0 is x0, y0, z0 and let's assume that the vector n is given by a comma b comma c. We want to find the equation of this plane. So let's take a point p given by x comma y comma z, a random point on that plane. We want to see what happens when point P is on this plane? So when point P is on this plane, it means this vector, the vector P0, P, is perpendicular to the vector N. So what does that mean? It means the dot product of these two vectors is 0. So what is P0, P? It is terminal minus initial. So the first component is x minus x0. The second one is y minus y0 and the third one is z minus c naught. The dot product of this with the vector n, which is a comma b comma c, that must be zero, because that's what it means for the two vectors to be perpendicular. And that gives us a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus c naught equals zero. So this is an equation of a plane that goes through point x0, y0, z0 with normal vector a, b, c. So normal vector means a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Let's now do an example. Find an equation of the plane passing through the point negative 1, 3, negative 2 and perpendicular to this vector. So we are given the point as negative 1, 3, negative 2, and we are given the vector as that. So this would be our normal vector, and this would be our point P0. So A, which would be 2, so A comes from here, times x minus minus 1, plus B, which is 1, it comes from here, times y minus y naught, which is 3, minus 1, times z minus z naught equals 0. So this would be 2x plus 2 plus y minus 3 minus z minus 2 equals 0. So this is going to be the equation of the plane. You could of course simplify it a little bit. Okay, so let's look at one more example. Find an equation of the plane perpendicular to the line. So we are given a line rather than a vector and it goes through the point 1 comma negative 1 comma 2. So anytime we want to find equation of a plane we need two things. We need one point on the plane which we are given 1 comma negative 1 comma 2 and we also need a vector perpendicular to the plane. So what is a vector perpendicular to the plane? It is the vector that is in the direction of line L. So if you look at the coordinates of that vector they are 2, 3, and 1 because at the bottom here we have over 1 and we have to make sure that the coefficients of x, y, and z are all 1. So the normal vector is going to be 2, 3, 1 and the point P0 is 1, negative 1, 2. So that gives us the equation as 2 which is our a times x minus 1 plus b which is this one times z plus 1 or uh, y plus 1 and then plus c which is 1 times z minus 2 equals 0 and that is our answer to this question. Okay so let's do one more example and then we'll talk about the distance from a point to a plane although after this one I will do also a sketching of a, a plane and then we'll do the distance from a point to a plane. Find an equation of the plane that passes through these three points. 
So again, we want to think about how to write down the equation of a plane. If you want to write down the equation of a plane, we need a point and a normal vector. So do we have a point? Yes, we in fact have three different points. So P0 would be 0, 0, 2. Now you could use any of these three points. So that's one of the points. The other point is, um, let's call this P0. P0 is 0, 0, 0, 2. The other point is A equals 1, 2, 1, and B equals 1, 0, negative 1. Okay, so we need to find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. So this would be our normal vector. So we're gonna, what we're going to do, or this one, either one of these two could be normal vector. What we are going to do, we're going to have to find a vector that is perpendicular to both of these. Based on what we have learned before, we will have to find the cross product of these two vectors. So we're going to evaluate PA and we're going to evaluate P. B, P0A and P0B, and this would be a normal vector. So what is P0A? It is going to be terminal minus initial. So it is 1 minus 0, and then 2 minus 0, and then 1 minus 2. So terminal is 1, 2, 1, and initial is 0, 0, 2. So if we do that, we're going to get 1, 2, negative 1 as P0A. Now we're going to evaluate P0B. P0 is um, 0, 0, 2. So that would have to be subtracted from B, which is 1, 0, and negative 1. So if we subtract this, we're going to get 1, 0, negative 3. These two vectors are going to be on the plane. So if we want to find a normal vector to the plane, we'll have to find the cross product of these two. So we'll go ahead and evaluate cross product of these two. P0A cross P0B. That is going to be I, J, K. 1, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 3, which is going to be I times so we'll have to do the determinant of this, which is going to be minus 6 minus 0 minus j times, eliminate the first row, eliminate the second column. So we're going to get minus 3 and then plus 1 and then plus k times, eliminate the first row and the last column, 0 minus 2. So the normal vector would be negative 6i plus 2j minus 2k. So the equation of the plane would be minus 6 times x minus x naught. So the point is 0, 0, 2. So it would be minus 0 plus 2 times y minus 0 plus minus 2, which is our c, times z minus 2 equals 0. So this is an equation of the plane. Now, if you want to check whether this is in fact the correct answer or not, you could simply take this equation, simplify, and plug in the three points into the equation and make sure they do satisfy this. So the first one was 1, so let's look at the three points that we are given, 0, 0, 2. So 0, 0, 2, that gives you 0 plus 0 minus 4 plus 4, so that does work. The next one is 1, 2, 1. So if we plug in 1, 2, 1, we get minus 6 plus 4 minus 2 plus 4. And that, of course, is also 0. And if we plug in the last point, 1, 0, negative 1, we get minus 6, 1, 0, negative 1. We get this is also equal to 0. So that, in fact, does work. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is learn how to sketch planes in three dimension. So let's look at these three examples. And these are really important examples because later when we are doing um, evaluating volumes, evaluating line integrals, surface integrals, we'll have to be able to graph a bunch of surfaces in three dimensional space. So it would be very important to be able to visualize these. So let's just start from the planes uh, x equals 2. So x equals 2 is all of the points that when you drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, they hit this point 2. So it means it's a plane parallel to the yz plane. So x 
equals 2 is a plane parallel to the yz plane through the point uh, 2, 0, 0. Next is uh, plane x plus y equals 1. So if you look at x plus y equals 1, there is no z in that equation. So x plus y equals 1, we could draw them, we could draw this uh, pl uh, plane in the xy plane. In the xy plane, you get a line. Now there is no z component. So it means it's the same line moved up and down. So it is the line x plus y equals 1 on the xy plane moved parallel to the uh, xy plane. So you take that line and you move it up and down parallel to itself. Okay, next one is x plus y plus z equals 1. So what is x plus y plus z equals 1? The easiest way of drawing that plane would be to find the intercepts. So x plus y plus z equals 1. For x intercept, we will have to set y and z equals 0. So that would give us x equals 1. So it would go through the point 1, 0, 0. Same thing for y and z. So that would be 1 here and z here. So the plane would go through this triangle. So it would be the triangle in the first octant and then the extension of this same triangle in all other octants. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to find the distance from a point to a plane. So let's draw a diagram and we're going to uh, obtain this formula. Okay. So we have a point P0 and we have a point P and we have a normal vector N. We are trying to find the distance from P to this plane. Uh, that I've drawn here. So let's say this foot of perpendicular is h. So one way of evaluating the distance would be to evaluate this one. We could also look at the exact same thing on this side. If this is the distance, then if we call this angle theta, then this distance can be evaluated using this right triangle. Using this right triangle, we could say this distance is equal to magnitude of P0P times cosine of theta because that is adjacent. Now this cosine appears in dot product so this would be p0p dotted with n because the other vector is n that makes angle theta with p0p divided by magnitude of n. Now because it's distance I'll have to take the absolute value because cosine sometimes could be negative. So the formula for the distance from a point p to a plane containing P0 with normal vector n is absolute value of n dotted with P0P divided by magnitude of n. And let us do one example on this. Find the distance from the origin to this plane. So in order to evaluate the distance, we need to find the point P0, a point P0 on this plane. Any point that satisfies this plane would work. So the easiest way would be to say 2 plus 3 plus 0 equals 5. So that means 1 comma 1 comma 0 is a point on this plane. Now what is the point that we're trying to find the distance? Well they said from the origin. So the point P would be 0 0 0. And then what is the normal vector to this plane? It is 2 3 root 3. So why is it that the normal vector is the coefficients of x, y, and z? That's because if we go back and look at the equation of a plane, the equation of a plane was a times x, b times y, c times z. So the coefficients of x, y, z give you the coordinates of the normal vector. So going back to 
the solution to this normal vector would be 2 comma 3 comma root 5 so now the distance would be evaluated by absolute value of p0 p as we have in this formula dotted with n so dot product is commutative so you could do n dot p0 p or p0 p dot n those are the same thing divided by magnitude of n so magnitude of n would be square root of 4 plus 9 plus 3 dot product of p0 p and n would be we'll have to first find p0 p so p0 p is going to be e minus p0 so negative 1 negative 1 0 dotted with n which is 2 3 root 3 so let's evaluate the bottom evaluating the bottom we get root 16 evaluating the top we get 2 minus 2 minus 3 in absolute value so that would be 5 over 4. To summarize what we did in this lecture, to find an equation of a plane, we need one point x0, y0, z0, and a normal vector to that plane. After finding a point on the plane and a normal vector, we could use the formula a parentheses x minus x0 plus b parentheses y minus y0 plus c parentheses z minus z0 equal to zero a normal vector to a plane can be found by looking at the coefficients of x y z in the equation of the plane to find the distance from a point p to a plane p we need to find one point p zero on the plane and then a normal vector to the plane which is the coefficients of x y z and then we use the formula absolute value of n dot p zero p divided by magnitude of n and that brings me to the end of this video. I will see you in the next video.